gravity. It's all around us and it exerts a certain influence over everything in our lives, including our smartphones. I'm Joe Levi for Pocket Now, and this is what you should do when gravity kills your smartphone. So first up, I had an entirely different video plan for today. It had to do with my Nexus 4 and a custom kernel. But last night, gravity exerted its will on my smartphone. This is a Nexus 4 for all those who are wondering right there. The back came out pretty much unscathed. A little bit of a chip down here in the corner, but the front is dead. Not only is it broken all over the place, but it's also dead. It doesn't recognize finger inputs, nothing at all. And well, let's just say it's painful because Nexus 4s aren't easy to come by, as many of you know. So in this video, we're going to talk about what you can do to protect yourself against an unfortunate fall caused by our enemy gravity and what you can do to recover from it. First and foremost, if your phone lands flat, there's not a lot you can do unless you have a really big bulky case. I had a bumper that was conveniently at home. I'd taken it off that morning was planning on putting it back on that night. This would have given just a little bit of a ridge when my phone hit the ground flat that might have given some level of protection. Believe it or not, screen protectors can also help in such a fall. Yes, they're not going to protect it from breaking, from cracking, from all that 100%. What they are going to do is they're going to add an extra layer of very, very durable protection. Now, that protection is going to keep small cracks and, and imperfections, defects and whatnot on the screen from exploding into these kinds of really, really big cracks that just take over your whole screen. So keeping your screen that much better will help prevent a catastrophic break in the future. When you're actually dropping it, it's also going to absorb some of that impact, some of those forces, and it may just keep that screen all in one piece. Even if it doesn't, I don't know if you can see, but there's shards. I mean, there, there's literally pieces of glass coming out of that screen. It's going to add an extra layer of protection to keep you away from those sharp pieces. That leads us to our next thing. By the way, yeah, I'd gotten that like two days before I dropped that. Just hadn't gotten around to installing it yet. Wow. Keep a hand on your device. That should go without saying. I prefer not to rely on my hands. Ironically enough, that's what failed me this time. I like to keep my device in a shirt pocket, like that, or in a holster, or in a pocket without anything else in that pocket. What can you do, or what should you do, immediately after you have dropped your device? You might be surprised. Immediately after you've dropped your device, don't touch it you're going to be tempted to reach down, grab it, look at it, and you, you'll be panicked. The adrenaline will probably be flowing. Don't touch it. Wait for just a second, gather yourself together, and then pick it up very, very carefully, preferably by its sides. Do not reach underneath and grab onto it. Now, the reason for that, this is glass. It is sharp. It is broken. Glass will cut you. And when it does, you're not going to like it. I've seen lots of friends who have done just that. They've picked up their device and they've immediately sliced open, sometimes filleted open a thumb or an index finger. It's not good. Once you've dropped your phone, it's probably already broken. Take a second, relax, don't worry, it's just a thing. Pick it up carefully and survey the damage. If there is none, congratulations. Be more careful next time. If it is damaged like mine, at least you didn't run your finger down over the top of it and slice your finger open as well. That's going to last a lot longer than it'll take you to get a new phone. Unless you're trying to get a new Nexus 4. I need a new phone. Before I did that though, I went and I, I wiped my phone. Just in case, because my data is still on there until I was able to boot up into recovery mode. That's the volume down and the power button. And I went through and just did a factory reset. That cleans everything off. That device now doesn't have my personal information on it, so at least I'm protecting myself that way. 
In my case, the very next thing that I did was I went on to the Google Play Store and I ordered up a new Nexus 4. It's the 16 gig version. It's going to cost me about 390 bucks after shipping and taxes, and it's going to be here in three to five weeks. I guess I'm going to have to be patient. Some of you might be able to go back to your carrier and say, hey, I broke my phone. Uh, what can you do for me? They might be able to get you into a new phone if you extend your contract with them. I'm off contract. I don't have that luxury, but I do that for other reasons that we've talked about in the past. After that, you're going to need a phone. So what I did is, luckily this is a GSM device and I have a GSM carrier. I was able to just pop out my SIM. Little push pin was able to pop that out. And at that point I needed to find a device that I had laying around that I could use while I'm waiting for my new Nexus 4 to arrive. That lucky device, it just happened to be, yeah, my T-Mobile G2 that's seen a lot of miles. If you liked what you saw, please give the video a thumbs up. If you've got some other tips for us, head over to pocketnow.com, leave us some comments in the article so we can all learn from each other's uh, mistakes and gravitational experience. If you've got a story, I wanna hear it. For Pocket Now, trying to keep you uh, from dropping your device, breaking your phone, and how to recover quickly just in case you do, I'm Joe Levi, thanks for watching. If anyone at Google is watching this and you want to know my order number so you can expedite that process, hey, that'd be great.